show. Thanks for being with us. We're so happy you're here on tonight's show. We'll be chatting with Steve Buscemi, and we've got another gorgeous performance from Ed Sheeran. He's here with us every night this week. Mr. Ed Sheeran is on the show, and he's in the studio. Hey. How are you, Ed? I'm great. Very, yeah? Very good, yeah. The performance last night was so good. Thank you. Bad Habits. Nice one. I always think, because it's... What do you say? You say, my bad habits lead to you. Yeah? Yep. All oh. last night, all anyone was singing was, my bad habits lead to Susan, she works on sound. <laughs> she, that's... Because that is the truth. If you work here, all your bad habits lead to Sue. <laughs> I don't know if it's too late for you to change the lyric, but... Maybe. Pop it in the think walk, see what happens. <laughs> hey, Ed and I spent the day at a ranch, which we're going to show you in just a moment. Ed, we learned how to be cowboys. Do you think that, that was your last time on a horse? Uh, oh, well, maybe... No, no, I'll probably get on a horse. I'm just terrified of, of, of heights, but I love the fact that I'm, like, promoting a new single whilst, like, trying to lasso... Uh, a mechanical bull kind of thing. Yeah, it? <laughs> well, it's, it's all coming up. You know what they say, if you're scared, you, sometimes you just got to get back on the horse. Right. That's what I say. It's just, I don't know if that's a saying. That's just something that I say, Mark. Sometimes if you're scared, you got to get back on the horse, you know? And Ed's going to be performing tonight on a horse. That's right, Ed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, he's on a, a, cover, horse. a cover of uh, Little Nas X, Old, Old Town Road. <laughs> Ed Sheeran, everybody! <laughs> What did everyone, what did everybody do? Can I be annoying? I know that that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask a question then and immediately just give you my answer. <laughs> so I was going to say, what did everyone do last night? I won't. I'll say, do you know what I did? I had a great evening. Glass of red wine. Watch Notting Hill. Yes. yes. Honestly, gets better with every viewing. Yeah. It actually gets better. Don't look at me like that, Louis. How many times have you seen it? I must have seen it 20 times. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't say it like that. Like, yeah, I imagine that. Like, uh, yeah, no, I imagine that because you're just one of those idiots. That's how you I said it. Well, are you, on, are you, you don't enjoy a rom com? <laughs> I do, but you, you, you take it to another level. Thank you. Like your obsession. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, no. Very kind of you to say that. Yeah. I'm not alone in this. I text, I text Calms, because I knew, I knew he would understand where I, what I was feeling. I said, I'm watching Notting Hill. <laughs> it's never been better. <laughs> I texted back, Horse and Hound magazine. Horse and Hound yeah. magazine. Oh. God, I love that movie. I'm talking about Notting Hill. It's when Harry met Sally for me. Yeah. That's really... Oh. That's really the gold yeah. standard. That's a good one. That's the gold standard of rom-coms. Don't look at me like that. What is your face doing? <laughs> you're, you're looking at me. Really? You're looking at me like I Not just it. said. Like I just said. You know, what I, you know what I love to eat for dinner? Live cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... You, it's fine. <laughs> what? What's the beef? You I do you bang on about them. <laughs> So it's not the issue. The films aren't the issue. It's me. <laughs> the films are fine. It's yeah. me banging on about them. Pretty much. I give you that. I understand. I get yeah. it. I think. I think you're completely right. I do. It's almost like Louis kind of a cynical, grumpy guy who takes everything too seriously, and you're a light-hearted, devil-may-care type, and you've met here, on the floor of this show. Who thought you'd meet here? <laughs> And then, like, one Martha and the Vandell song later, and the two of you are having Aperol spritzes. A hundred percent. Well, look, anyway, that's what I did last night, and I recommend it. But I do think the wine helped. <laughs> I do, I do. But, look, we can talk about this all day, but right now, I'm, I'm just a host sitting in front of an audience <laughs> asking you to let me share the news. <laughs> And did everybody see this? There's a growing concern among scientists that humans have already contaminated the planet Mars with life. Despite the best efforts from space agencies, vehicles sent to Mars could accidentally be carrying microbes from Earth. 
humans may have already accidentally contaminated another planet. I will say, it does feel very much on brand. <laughs> contaminated Mars. If I think it feels harsh, how do they know? We might have improved Mars with our microbes. <laughs> Scientists, you don't know yet. <laughs> Scientists. <laughs> You know what I mean? You think I harp on about <laughs> rom-coms? <laughs> Scientists. <laughs> so they invented the vaccine, that bottom like six months for you, and now it's over for scientists? I don't think it's over. I'm just like, guys, lighten up, have a glass of wine. <laughs> Watch four weddings and a funeral. Knock yourself <laughs> out, you know? And we've got some good economic news to report for you. According to economists, states with legal recreational marijuana made $2.7 billion in tax revenue in 2020 alone. Woo! Yeah. When they heard this, your old weed dealer was like, I'm so happy for them. <laughs> California alone made more than a billion dollars last year on marijuana taxes. So I guess there's no hiding what all of us were doing when we were working from home. <laughs> $2.7 billion. In other words, you could say that the revenue was... <laughs> oh, hang on. Sorry. It's, it's difficult, cos I know the joke. <laughs> so it's hard. You don't know the joke, so I know the joke, so it's... Let me... Hang on. We'll reset. OK. Um, cos once I say this, there's no going back. <laughs> You could say the revenue from taxing recreational marijuana sales is high. <laughs> oh, wow. We've had some low points. <laughs> I don't know if they got it. I, I think... think that's the thing. It's what. Do you know what I mean? That's right. That's right, Harry. <laughs> he's, he's, he's dressed like a very cool Dumbledore. That's why. That's right, Harry. <laughs> I think you died after that joke bombed. <laughs> God, could you imagine? Can you imagine if that was the last thing I said? <laughs> I said, because, you know, you could say that the sales are high. <laughs> Gone. Do the next joke! Do Dead. the next joke, quick! Dead. And then that's the, that's the last thing I ever said. Not about where to go out. No. I'd go out on that joke. Yeah. Carry it out on your shield, you know? Mm. Oh, that's, hey, that's, that's right, Harry. That's right, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you be you. That's right, Harry. Go, go on. Are you being, um, Hagrid? <laughs> that's right, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Harry. <laughs> Oh, that's right, Harry. <laughs> I love you. Everyone here loves you. I love you too, Harry. Actually, we, when, when are we doing now? <laughs> Hagrid spin-off with Reg. He's Hagrid. <laughs> He's got a very Hagrid look tonight. This is not a, the regular. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All he can say... He's really, he's brilliant at Hagrid. So long as Hagrid is only saying the words, that's right, Harry. <laughs> Anything else and any other line, he's absolutely finished. <laughs> is, that, is that right? That's right, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a story. If you're thinking of making a career change, you're not alone, because according to a new survey, one in four workers has plans to start looking for a new job once the pandemic ends. It does make sense. Once your boss has heard you use the bathroom during a Zoom meeting, you can't go back. <laughs> do you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm thinking about doing? 
I don't know if I'll do it as my full job, or maybe a, a side hustle, or start it as a side hustle, see what it goes. You know what I'm going to do? Chimney sweep. Oh, nice. <laughs> I am, you know? I'm the little, little, I'm the little, I am the little, you know? If money's no object, money is not a thing in your life, what is the perfect job? What's the job you'd want? Other than this one? Of course. <laughs> I think money's no object, it would be open three days a week and I would have a sandwich shop in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Where I just got to serve people really fun sandwiches and pick what music was playing. Yeah. And maybe two days a week it's open. You're completely right. I actually think sandwiches are the thing I'm best at in my life. Yeah. I do. I yeah. honestly, but you, you, Louis, you now this you do know. Yeah. This you, this I don't harp on about. You're very, you are very good. I do think it's what I'm best at. What's your ultimate sandwich? Yeah. I, we haven't got time. <laughs> what? I, the, the last thing that this show should become is a group of friends chatting about sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> really? That feels like that's exactly what kind of show this is. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly can't believe this. <laughs> when do we go on the break, Rob? When do we go on the summer break? <laughs> Look at <laughs> oh, I'm losing. I'm actually losing. <laughs> I'm genuinely losing my mind. Look at what we're doing. <laughs> I think we've got enough now. Should we go to break? <laughs> and we wanted to show you this. According to a new study, 68% of pet owners say that their pet makes the final decision on who they date. It's wow. true, the survey uh, involved 2,000 single pet owners, and when it comes to opinions on a partner, two-thirds of them trust their pet more than friends or family. We can never let cats know that they have this level of power. <laughs> you can't. Imagine getting home, asking your pet if they should keep, you know, your new love interest, and your pet's like, keep him. Trust me, he's phenomenal in bed. <laughs> is this study real, do we think? Is this a real study? Where do we find these studies, Ian? I think the study's real, but I think this is the Biden presidency. During Trump, it would have been nine stories about how the world's on fire. Yeah. And now Biden's president, and we have to be like, I don't know, a community college in Santa Fe asked five people if their cats like their boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get four minutes out of that. Yeah. I looked into this survey. Go on. It's true. It's really legit. It's, uh, it was hosted by a pet supply company called Zesty Paws. Zesty Paws? Uh, gotta do it. You Zesty know it's legit. Paws. Zesty Paws. Are we allowed to mention Zesty Paws on, on the show, Nick? I mean, I, I would be shocked if anything that happened in the last 45 minutes gets on television tonight. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, then, in that case, we'll go to break. Ed Sheeran and I are here when we come back. Come on back, everyone.